Hello, my name is Millie Silverstein and Esther Phillips was my aunt. I will tell some of her story on this video by describing my feelings and experiences of growing up knowing that I had an aunt living as an artist in New York who the family could not find. She left Pittsburgh in the 1930s to go to Greenwich Village and live an artist's life. That's all the family knew. I'll also talk about what happened when I finally met her during a weekend in 1982 when she was 80 years old. Esther was one of seven children born to immigrant parents. My mother was one of her younger sisters. Her parents, my grandparents, were Russian Jews who had emigrated to Pittsburgh in 1905 when Esther was three years old. I remember being told by my mom only that Esther had left without telling anyone. I was not to mention her name when my grandparents were in the room, since it upset them, my mom told me. Since my grandparents lived with us, Esther was like a ghost. All I knew was that she only wanted to draw when she was growing up and did not cooperate in supporting the family. Finally, when I was a teenager in the 1950s, a friend of Esther's in New York contacted my mother and said that Esther needed help paying her rent. At first, the family sent money to the friend for Esther. And then at some point, Esther wrote to my mother. And then finally, Esther sent her some paintings to sell. A show was arranged at the Pittsburgh Arts and Crafts Center, and it generated enough sales to sustain her for a while. The monthly checks to her continued until she developed diabetes and lost her sight and was unable to paint or sell her paintings. My parents flew to New York several times to help her get medical care and finally to clean out her room in the Lincoln Square apartments, which were low-income housing. The room was lined five deep with paintings along the walls, about 400 in all. They sent them back to Pittsburgh where my dad eventually arranged to have some of them shown at a local bank. In 1982, I went to New York to finally meet Esther. She was at the Roosevelt Hospital suffering from diabetes. She looked so old. She looked like my grandmother, her mother, and she also resembled my, my aunts, her sisters. She had little eyesight left, but was feisty with a sharp wit and great recall. She seemed glad to meet me, and I visited her for several hours each day over a weekend. Our conversations focused on her years in the 1930s and 40s in the village. She said that every day's routine was to take her art supplies, pick a location, set up, and paint, hopefully to sell enough to buy food and pay rent. She continually struggled with supporting herself but said she had good friends and was able to live communally when she had to. The friends she mentioned included writers such as Ben Hecht, who wrote for the front page, and Maxwell Bodenheim, who was a poet. The artists she mentioned were Franz Klein and Hans Hoffmann. She mentioned that at one point she had enough money <clears throat> to rent a room in a building on the same street where the poet Edna St. Vincent Millay lived. She said it, it was annoying to, to live on that street because the street was frequently blocked off by security, so she couldn't get to her room at the end of the day. Ironically, she said her happiest years were the years she spent at the Hudson Valley Psychiatric Hospital in upstate New York. She had a breakdown in the 40s because of the stress and anxiety of struggling to survive as an artist. She was able to live at the hospital for seven years, years where she was given art supplies and freedom to paint, along with food and shelter. She said that she not only painted the life inside, but also the nearby rural landscape where she was allowed to wander. This work is considered her best and most valuable. She talked about growing up in Pittsburgh. She said she felt misunderstood by her siblings and not encouraged or supported in her need to draw by her parents. She fought with her mother because she would tear up bed sheets to use for cleaning brushes. 
She loved her father and felt loved by him and said she missed him when she went to New York. I feel lucky to have had the opportunity to meet her and hear some of her story. And I also feel very lucky to have been able to put a face and form to the mystery in my life. I love the message she wrote in one of her many letters, and this is what she said. I consider myself very lucky. I did exactly what I wanted to do in my life, and I was happy doing it. I lived the best life. When I got up in the morning, I looked forward to the day. I was happy I could paint.